Hello and welcome to Danny's Garage. Today we're going to have a look at a very, very special watch in the Soviet watch uh, history. It's the first Vostok Amphibia, the first generation from 1967. So first, I uh, would like to clarify something is that this watch has been uh, restored with a new part to replace the ones that uh, were completely uh, torn. So the, the dial is new, uh, the minute and the second hands are new, uh, but they are all like the original. So we cannot uh, have a review of uh, this amphibia without uh, going back to uh, 1967 and the, even before with the improvement of uh, military uh, underwater diver techniques. Country where uh, little by little has to develop uh, new dive watch. Uh, the Italian have in uh, 1936 uh, develop the Panerai uh, Radiomir for the underwater military division. Uh, they were also after in uh, 1953 the Blancpain 50 Phantoms and in uh, 1954, just a few months after, Rolex launches its famous uh, Submariner. Uh, at this time, the Soviet Union dive watch were still the very obsolete uh, Zlatus caliber 191 YC. Uh, so they had to find a solution to replace uh, that. They didn't want to ask to the, to the Swiss. Uh, they didn't want also uh, to buy the, the patent that were, that were expensive. So they asked their best engineer to develop a completely uh, new dive watch and this is uh, with what they came for. But before the Amphibia, they were the Komandirsky, so two years before, in, uh, in 65. And actually, this watch was already a big improvement uh, from the Pobeda, which were also used uh, by uh, Soviet uh, military as a, as a field watch because this one has this uh, now famous uh, case back that we have also here on the Amphibia with this ring that pushes on a, a rubber gasket and with the pressure it push more and it gives uh, more uh, water tightness to the watch. But this watch was uh, not sufficient uh, for diving actually I'm really not sure that it was at the time waterproof, at least it was uh, at the best uh, sweat proof uh, because here it doesn't have a screw down crown, it's just a, a simple push uh, back crown where on uh, the Amphibia, on top of this specific back, they have introduced uh, a screw down crown as we can see, uh, as we can see here. Now the task to develop this uh, new engineering technique for underwater Soviet watch was given to two engineers. Uh, the first engineer was uh, Mikhail Fedorovich Novikov and the second one was Vera Fedorovna Belova. And actually this case back, this uh, crew down crown and also this specific design for the plexiglass that same with the pressure give better tightness to the case is still used on uh, the 2024 uh, Amphibia. So actually when the watch was introduced there were two versions, a civilian version like this one, so with written on the back uh, 200 meters, you can see here on the top, 
uh, but we will have a look at the back case later. And a one with written 300 meters, so for the military. And actually, the crystal was much thicker to resist to the additional pressure, as well as the case back. And the dial were different. It was a, a dial with a mix of Arabic. There were 12, uh, 3, 6, and 9 and uh, indices, whereas for uh, civilian it was mainly this dial, but there were also, as we will see later, some uh, slight difference. But the rest of the watch, the movement, uh, the way the strap was attached, everything was the same. So when we look at the watch, it doesn't look any uh, other dive watch, uh, even after uh, Vostok has introduced uh, a different design, much modern design, but why they couldn't go directly with uh, regular lugs like here? Uh, it's uh, because at the, at the time uh, they have difficulties uh, to work on stainless steel, which is uh, much harder than the, the case which was made of brass. Uh, chrome plated brass that they were using on Commandierski, for example. Um, and I have read somewhere that the, the lugs were, were breaking, so they had to find a completely different design and they arrived with this uh, specific uh, lugs and a very simple case. And with this very simple, just uh, circular uh, design, they arrived to, to give uh, a very, very good uh, water resistant uh, to the watch. Actually, this watch was produced for a quite long time because it was produced from uh, 67 to 79, where this second generation was, uh, was introduced and we can see that they, they had better machinery at the time and they can produce a, a very different uh, case shape. So these uh, swivel lugs were just attached to the, to the case and uh, actually it was a very simple design but it, uh, it works quite well and it gives to uh, this first generation uh, Amphibia, a very, very specific uh, look. Let's have a look now at the bezel and the dial. So the bezel is a friction bezel with a, it's a bi-directional bezel. And actually, um, when uh, put under pressure in the water, the, the bezel is pushed and uh, it doesn't move freely as uh, when you are outside the, the water with uh, no pressure. And this concept is still used in a uh, generation of amphibia that you can buy uh, still today. So the case diameter is 38 millimeters and uh, it's uh, 42 millimeter with this uh, crown. Actually, look, and the design of the, of the crown is the same as on second generation. And when you go to the third generation, the design of the crown is uh, much modern. Uh, the lug to lug distance is 44.5. And the thickness of this uh, civilian version is 11.3 millimeters. The lug opening here is 18 millimeters, and with this uh, nylon uh, NATO strap, uh, the hole weighs 55 grams. The crystal is domed, and it's uh, an acrylic crystal. The hour and minute hands are the correct uh, model uh, with loom, except that uh, they should have been in uh, in gold. I think what uh, from what I have seen with uh, with photo here, it's uh, they are in silver. But uh, second hand, which I think might have been red. Now it's kind of 
gold or orange uh, due to the time uh, is a correct one so the, the lollipop one with a loom inside now it uses an improved version of the newly developed case back that was developed uh, for the commander ski uh, so it's it's two pieces you have first this ring and then you have the the back case here which is uh, thicker than on the on the commander ski and actually today a new commander ski and a new amphibia are still using this same uh, technique uh, to close the back and there is here uh, a join I will try to take out and so the case with the pressure push back on this uh, rubber gasket so this is the export version so all is written in English so we have written waterproof 200 meter but in most of the amphibia first generation it's uh, written hermetic 200 meters uh, so except if uh, this watch is a 79 if it's not uh, from the year 79 where when this new generation was uh, introduced so the second generation uh, so it should uh, it should be uh, written hermetic so after we have amphibian 2209 the movement number and uh, shot proof balance let's have a look of the movement so this is a 2209 so it's a movement that was uh, widely used in the 60s up to actually the, the 80s because this uh, second generation of amphibia has actually the, the same movement and with the third generation so like this one the movement uh, change so it's uh, 18,000 bit per hour very usual for soviet watches on the, from the era it has no hacking uh, it shock protected we can see here and the power reserve is of uh, 38 hour let's screw down the crown and start the movement Here is the amphibia on my wrist. I have a, a quite small wrist. So this Vostok, I think, is uh, really one of the most important Vostok in history. As we know today, uh, dive watches are the flagship of uh, watch uh, brand. Look at uh, Rolex with a Submariner. It was not the first Rolex, but it today is the most emblematic. Same with Omega and the Seamaster, uh, also uh, Blancpain with uh, 50 Phantoms, and it's certainly the same today with uh, Vostok and uh, the Amphibia. There are uh, a lot, a lot of models. If you go to uh, Vostok website, uh, you can uh, look at their collection. Every year there are uh, new models, and uh, I think it's uh, one of the best selling uh, watch uh, or dive watch uh, in uh, history knowing that it started in 67 and it's still in sale today and you can have uh, uh, amphibia today for about a uh, hundred uh, uh, us dollar which uh, for this kind of watch is a real real bargain on top of uh, having a counterpart uh, military version, uh, this watch was also a space watch. It has been used uh, in 1975 during the Soyuz 17 mission and the astronaut uh, Georgi uh, Grensko 
uh, use it during this 29 days mission. And if we compare uh, this watch uh, in 1967 to, for example, uh, a Swiss uh, submariner from uh, Rolex, uh, it was also rated 200 meters. The Vostok was quite uh, an achievement being able to uh, do the 200 meters rating and 300 meters for the military version. So if you look at the history of uh, this watch, knowing that it has been issued for a Soviet uh, underwater diver, that it has been into space, uh, that it had the, the same rating at the time as a Rolex Submariner, and it's still in production, so today you can still buy Amphibia today. Uh, it's really an uh, underrated model. It's becoming more and more difficult to, to find. Uh, you find now uh, the, for the, the cheapest one are the one either in very bad conditions or that has been restored, like, like this one. And uh, if you want uh, a fully original military one, so this is uh, becoming a challenge to find a nice one. How long it will stay under the radar, this I don't know. Also, it would be nice uh, in the comment to know if uh, this special design is something that you like or no, absolutely you hate it. Uh, put that in the comment. If you enjoy the video and if you learned something today, please put the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe as there will be new review coming very soon.